Hi, you are welcome to this lesson. In this lesson, we will learn the practical perspective of the OSI model. After this lesson, you will be able to understand the layers of the OSI model, what each layer talks about, what happens at each layer and how it governs networking technology to ensure networking standards. Before we begin, let's have a quick look up of the previous lesson. In the previous lesson, we learned about network topology. We said that, it refers to the arrangement of the nodes in a network. We also understood that this arrangement can be physical or logical. Again, we talked about the various types of topologies we have, their merits and demerit. I highly recommend that, you watch the previous lessons before you continue with this one if you have not done so. Now, let's go on to today's lesson. You may be asking what an OSI model is. This is a network map that was laid down as a universal standard for creating networks. Now, to explain further, think of it this way. In everything we do, as humans, there are rules and standards that governs and defines how things should be done. As technology advances and many tech manufacturing companies emerged, there came the need to set standards by which devices on the network should work to achieve a common goal of error-free communication and data transmission. These standards were then defined and put together by the International Organization for Standardization also known as ISO and was called the OSI model. OSI means Open Systems Interconnection. This model is further divided into seven layers. Each layer has specific functions it performs within a network. Without this concept, there wouldn't have been cordiality between communication devices from different tech companies. Therefore, everybody would have loved to do his own thing without a particular standard. So, again, this exists to ensure standards in how communication takes place in networks. Now, let take the various layers, one after the other and digest them. The first layer is called the physical layer. This layer is responsible for the transmission of bits. Now, a bit is either 0 or 1. That is the basic language a computer understands. As discussed in our previous lessons, if host A sends data to host B, this data is transmitted in form of zeros and ones, which is called bits. A group of 8 bits equals 1 byte and is known as octets. A group of 4 bits is called nibble. We will learn more about units of digital information in later videos as we progress. So. The main responsibility of the physical layer is to transmit raw bits stream over the physical medium. These medium includes all network cable types such as twisted pair cable, coaxial cable, fiber optics cable, and even Wi-Fi. Even though the OSI model was developed before the implementation of Wi-Fi technology, Wi-Fi is still considered as layer 1 technology in the OSI model. This is because, Wi-Fi exists to transmit bits just as network cables do, but this time, in a wireless medium. Other device which works in the physical layer is a repeater, as they exits to amplify and regenerate weaker signals in transmission. A hub is also a layer 1 device, because, it forwards data using physical layer standards. As said earlier in previous lessons, Hub create one collision domain and one broadcast domain in its ports. This is because when hubs receive electrical signals from one port, they repeat it into all other ports, except the one it came into. This brings us to the next layer of the OSI model, called the data link layer. This layer is responsible for formatting and grouping the raw data signals into data packets before it transmits the packets through the physical layer. Examples of Layer 2 devices are network interface cards, wireless access cards and network switches. All of these are Layer 2 devices. This is a network interface card that uses a cable. 
This one is a wireless network interface card for desktop machines. And this is also a wireless network interface card for laptops. The main function of this layer is to convert and format raw bits into data packets and frames that are passed to higher layers. What happens in this layer is that the switch keeps an addressing scheme of all the network cards that exist in the various devices on the network. This address is what is called the MAC address. A MAC address uniquely identifies device in a local network, therefore is responsible for local identification and an IP address is responsible for global identification. A MAC address consists of 12 hexadecimal digits, usually grouped into pairs separated by hyphens. Every network card has a unique MAC address. MAC address means Media Access Control Address. So, in this local area network, if host A transmits data to host B, the switch will look at where the data is coming from, format it into packets and establish a connection between the source network interface card and the destination network interface card to transmit the data. This is usually called hop-to-hop -hop data delivery or transmission. Now, as data needs to be sent across different networks, this brings us to the layer 3 of the OSI model. This layer is called the network layer. It uses an addressing scheme called IP address. Now, in computer networks, every host is identified by an IP address. In most cases, data must travel through multiple hops before it gets to its final destination host on a different network or the internet. So, the layer 3 which is the network layer, exists to ensure safe delivery of packet from one end to the other end. This is called end-to-end -end data delivery. The device which facilitate this is called a router. Therefore a router is considered as layer 3 device. Of course, we also have layer 3 switches but we'll discuss that at the higher level. This layer is where addressing occurs. For example, in this cluster of networks connected by routers, if this host wants to send data to this host, the data is broken into packets. And the source host address and destination host address for the packet will be attached in a form of headers, that is, layer 2 header, which is the MAC address of the source network interface card and the MAC address of the next hop, as well as layer 3 header which is the IP address of source and destination hosts. This is done by the help of a protocol called Address Resolution Protocol. Simply put ARP. We will look at this extensively when we get to Internet protocols in later lessons. The purpose of the Layer 2 header is to get the packets from one hop to the next hop. When this happens, the current Layer 2 header is removed and the MAC address of this hop and the next hop is added. This process continues until the data reaches its final destination. When the packet reaches its final destination host, both headers are removed, and the packets are then reassembled. This layer is also responsible for determining the shortest route to the destination. This is because, in layer 3, each packet can take a different route to its intended destination and get reassembled at the receiving end. One may ask, if we have IP addresses at layer 3, why then do we need layer 2 headers? As I have already explained, layer 2 headers, that is, MAC addresses, are needed for hop-to-hop -hop delivery, while layer 3 headers, that is, IP addresses, are needed for end-to-end -end delivery. Now, think about what happens in layer 3, this way. If the data link layer is the highway for vehicles to pass, the network layer is the GPS system telling drivers how to get to their destinations. This bring in the fourth layer which is the transport layer. We shall end today's lesson here and continue with the transport layer in the next lesson. I hope you have understood what happens at each layer as discussed. Please note that the purpose of the OSI model is not to memorize the layers but rather understand what happens at each layer to facilitate data transmission. Kindly share this video if you find it helpful and invite others to watch. It will really encourage us to do more. See you in the next lesson.